That's a lot of people there. So this is the highest court in Great Britain, the Old Bailey. I, I don't think I've actually heard of the Old Bailey before. I'm obviously not that like well versed in British stuff. Is is that the proper name for it? I feel like they've been using like real names and stuff throughout this. It feels both imposing and serene at the same time. The atmosphere here makes almost words redundant. Whatever the country, determining a person's guilt or innocence is always a solemn affair. May I say something, Mr. Narhoda? Oh, uh, yes, what? Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, okay, that's never gonna go away. Your eyes look ready to pop out of your head again. I know, but I can't just, el I just can't help it. Oh my goodness, does that guy look like Edgeworth? He does sort of, doesn't he? Not the judge, but... In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. We are here today to determine the guilt or innocence of Mr. Magnus McGilded. Also, I have no idea if I use voice for characters, but it's sort of irrelevant now, doesn't, isn't it? Now that we seem to have an entirely different cast that we're dealing with. I now call upon the counsels for the prosecution and the defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is fully prepared. That must mean the Reaper of the Bailey. He really does look fully prepared to dispatch his next poor victim to the underworld. Counsel for the defense, you appear to be Eastern. Do you speak English? Huh? Oh, yes, of course, sorry. But he asked if the defense was ready. And I couldn't be further from ready if I tried. His eyes please me. Nippon knees. Why does that feel racist? <laughs> like, I... Probably... I mean, it almost definitely isn't just conceptually. Just knowing... Knowing Nippon's like the proper Japanese word for Japan, right? It feels like they're... It feels weirdly malicious, though. This rouse your fear, your doubt, your trepidation. They run wild, clinging to some phantom notion of courage. The quintessential look of a sacrificial lamb. Ah, cold shiver just ran down my spine, all the way to the tips of my toes. Now, Mr. McGilded. Yes, my lord? You stand accused of murder, a capital offense. You'll be sent to the gallows if found guilty. Are you quite sure? He was to entrust your defense to this foreigner. As I've always said, my lord, it is a grand thing to give opportunities to the young. Even if the fellow is a student from some little island off in the far east. It is not the British way to ignore the dangers of yourself uh, to yourself and give those less fortunate a fair chance. Interesting way to uh, approach it. Interesting way to approach it. Also... Bigger landmass, Japan or Britain? I think Japan has like bigger landmass, doesn't it? Bigger. <coughs> uh, the United Kingdom is about 1.6 times smaller than Japan. Got it. Okay. There it is. Yeah, Britain, it's like, it's such an amazing thing that Britain was such a massive world power when being like a relatively small country. They're not like a massive country and they're a good size for like Europe, considering how Europe tends to be split up. But my goodness, they're so much smaller than other countries. Like, major countries that have been world powers and stuff, I mean. I like to think that Ox of Chivalry do the great British Empire proud. Mr. Mr. McGilded, what a fine gentleman London has in him! Did you hear that he donated 5,000 pounds to the government the other day? Mother, please, have you go uh, and play in the Gilded Park? It does seem to like, people do seem to like him. It seems as though everyone in the public gallery is firmly behind Mr. McGilded. That's definitely welcome news. He certainly has a way with words. I'm surprised he couldn't convince anyone to defend him. Well, I'm not sure how... Uh, how well we'll get by on, like public sentiment being on our side, but 
it's not a bad thing to have on our side, right? Eloquently put, Mr. McGilded, and most laudable sentiments. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm sure I need hardly remind you. Oh, that's what their jury member. Okay. The two six members of the public have been selected for your impartiality. As that motherfucker just like flips his fucking knife over and over again. Totally impartial. Are you ready to proceed? Yes, my lord. The task is send rotters to the gallows where they belong. I'm more than ready. Sounds impartial. At the manor, his lordship always says we should dispose of rubbish promptly. Naturally, I agree. Sounds impartial. Ah, any criminals here will soon be wishing they never set eyes on me. Is that a threat? With that knife, it feels like a threat. Well said. I feel a chill. <laughs> oh, don't mind me, my dears. Now I'll just be getting on with my knitting. I'll finish these mitts for my grandson. Uh, Miss Nohoto, those people are... Okay, that's interesting. I wonder if Britain, especially at this time, had any sort of similar jury selection process where you, like, both sides of the defense and prosecution like could like sit, like sit down and you could dismiss people to try to get like the most impartial jury you can, the most realistic jury, uh, the most fair jury you can. And the fact that he didn't have a defense up to this point, I wonder if basically the prosecution got full reign over who would be in the jury. The jury, yes. Ah, oh, that's something we don't have in Japan yet. That's right, I've only ever read about it. But here in Great Britain, the court's final verdict depends on the opinions of these six jurors. The judge passes sentence according to the law, but the jurors determine guilt based on common sense. So the defendants ultimately judge from two completely different points of view. But how exactly do the jurors give their verdict? That's... I don't know, but... I'm sure it'll become clear as the trial progresses. Yes, totally something we want to figure out on the spot. Yeah. Prosecutor Van Zeeks. My lord. It's been a number of years since we've seen you here in the courtroom. I thought you'd renounced your fame. I'm known as the Reaper of the Bailey, my lord. If any rather than fame, I would say. But yes, five years have passed since I last spread my wings in this capacity. So, what brings you back? Is there some change to circumstances which the court should be aware? <laughs> I leave that to your imagination, my lord. So the Reaper's been out, uh, out of action for five years. Why did he have to choose the day of all days to make a comeback? Don't lose heart, Mr. Narahoda. Well, technically, if I never would have gotten this chance otherwise, it's a positive thing, right? As you wish, uh, the court nevertheless welcomes your return. Now then, opening statements, I think. A summary of the case, if you please. Certainly, my lord. <clears throat> As your lordship is aware, this case is overwhelmingly simple. You must be the only ones here who aren't aware. Do I have a court record yet? I don't. <laughs> The incident took place in the late evening, three days past. The hour was some minutes after ten. The victim was a maker of building bricks known in the community as Thrice Fired Mason. Thrice? He was a very accomplished craftsman. The bricks he fired uh, were said to be almost indestructible. Okay. The victim's course was discovered in an omnibus on the surface of the streets of London at the time. A dagger that had been thrust into the victim's abdomen is believed to be the ultimate cause of death. Oh, come on, can't we get fingerprints? <laughs> Here's the autopsy report from the investigation, uh, investigating medical officer at Scotland Yard. Thank you, counsel. So accept that and the photograph as evidence.
interesting. One further item of evidence. The prosecution wishes to submit these as well. These are... Good. <laughs> okay, I saw that. Good lord, it's that blood council. Yes, my lord. Seized by policemen who arrived at the scene. These gore soaked gloves were taken from the hands of the accused when he was arrested. What? Mr. McGilded's gloves had blood on them? Ooh, that does seem suspicious. As it does. Yes, I accept these as evidence as well. Interesting. How did I get into this? Backed into a corner before I even started. Well, let's take a look at these. So it happened late at night, like three days ago, too. Just died from the injuries, basically. Blood on the gloves, but there isn't... I don't see blood on the handle. Seems like an odd observation when you have blood on that part. Like, that's such a weird part for the blood to get on. It's a very specific part, too. This is definitely blood, isn't it? Most pleasant sight you confront, uh, confront with on the first day in London. Oh, nothing will come of grumbling now. No. By the way, is Mr. McGilded right-handed? Yes, I believe so. He was toying with a coin in his right hand a little earlier. That's true. I remember that. Ah, pity. If only he'd been left-handed. I think blood on either glove would, give fairly, uh, would be fairly incriminating, really. Hmm. There's also the question of, what is the burden of proof? Is it the more likely scenario? It's like in the US, you have civil and criminal cases. Civil cases are, which one is more likely? And criminal is beyond a reasonable doubt. Which is a different burden of proof, basically, right? Okay. Continuing. According to the driver of the omnibus, there are only two passengers traveling inside his vehicle at the time. Oh no, only two. Obviously, one of those passengers was the deceased brickmaker, Mr. Mason. The other was the accused, Magnus McGilded. Well, rather damning circumstances to say the least. Defendant, what say you? Well, of course, I have no recollection of such a thing. What? What is your recollection then? Semi gilded? Oh, to be sure, I rode the omnibus that evening. But whenever I'm in a carriage, I'm taken with a fierce tiredness, and I always succumb to it. Are you claiming to have been asleep? That is such a... Oh, no, 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 no. I can't win this case. His alibi is he fell asleep while the murder was happening in front of him. Is the motion of my carriage, my lord. Lilton, so it is. And when I opened my eyes again, there was a desperate sight before me. The body of a man I'd never laid eyes on before me, uh, on before in my life. Now I ask you, what good heart a soul would rush to help a fellow bleeding from his stomach? And are we saying that's where the, uh, the blood comes from, him trying to close the wounds? I wasn't about to start worrying about my gloves now, was I? I reached out to give the man a hand, but why only... So the blood got into the gloves then, after the man had been killed. You know, where the blood is, it makes it look more like he tried to grab the bloody blade. Just that grip. Like, you grab it in, like, between your thumb and whatnot. What, like, between the thumb and the index finger, it's a weird place for the blood to fall. If it's, It looks like it comes from getting a grip on something, but only with one hand, too, in this case, right? And it didn't look like there was blood on the handle, so it didn't look like he'd, it would be a matter of, it, like, being, blood being on the handle, right? Unfortunately, that statement of the drivers is the only uh, is only the beginning. But that's not all of it. 
There are multiple witnesses to the precise moment at which the brickmaker was fatally stabbed. What? But there's only two people. If your whole thing is there's only two people in the car, how do you have a witness to it? I feel you, juror number six, I feel you. Oh, da, oh, da, oh, da. When the killing took place, only the victim and the accused were inside the carriage. And there were witnesses to the crime. This is not just a case of compelling evidence. For the carriage, did it have like open windows or something? It is the nail in the coffin for the accused. Hmm. Thank you, counsel. The circumstances of the crime have now been made quite clear. I think we'd like to hear testimony from these witnesses first of all. Your wish is my command. Bailiff, bring the witnesses in at once. No, he's very grand. He's very grand. All the witnesses. Oh, right. I forgot this sort of worked that way, didn't it? Interesting. Oh, my name is... Well, everyone calls me Beppo. I, uh, I drive an omnibus in the East End. Bruce Vapley, mama banker in the city. Oh, my name's First. Lady First. I'm, uh, I make hearts for gents. Lady? Are you, like, cross-dressing? Trans? So, I mean, they make pun names all the time, right? Let's begin by confirming the facts. Three days ago, at a short time after 10 o'clock in the evening, all of you present in the stand were in an omnibus and witnessed to the aforementioned incident. Okay, I need to look up what the fucking omnibus is. Does it have, like... The pictures I'm seeing makes it look like it's just one carriage, but it's, like, a bigger one that, like, shepherds people around, but... I guess some of them look like... No, not really even... <sighs> like, there's a few that sort of look like they might sort of look like they have different, like, compartments, but... Right away, that part does not make sense to me. Am I... I feel like I'm missing something notable. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Quite right. Oh, uh, yes, sir. That's right, sir. Very well, then. Let's proceed to your formal testimonies, please. Each of you will tell the court precisely what you saw. It, it was the last bus of the evening, so I had a few customers. So I had few customers. I remember it well. The victim and the man accused of killing him were sat next to each other inside the bus. And out of the blue, the accused just reached over and plunged a knife right into his guts. Th that's right, she stabbed him! I screamed, I did, I couldn't help it! Oh my goodness, that fucking hat. He's gonna give me OCD. Oh, as soon as I heard the scream, I stopped my bus and oh, then I saw it too. Hmm. Unambiguous testimony, I must say. Exactly, my lord. These men witnessed the incident in the omnibus with their own eyes. I thought these were the only fucking two in the omnibus. How do you make the argument that there's only two people in it, but there's also two other fucking witnesses? Like, I look at these and there's like obviously windows in these carriages and whatnot, but at the same time, he just said they were in the omnibus, right? Um, I'd like to ask a question, if I may. Yes, counsel? Well, this testimony... It makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Why not? Well, the incident took place inside a moving carriage, didn't it? It has been clearly stated from the outset, yes. Well, in that case... How could these two witnesses possibly have seen what happened? There's no way they could have seen the inside of the moving carriage. There's like some really obvious thing about omnibuses that makes this like possible, isn't it? That I'm just like unaware of because I'm new. How oh, quaint. 
I've read that civilization in Eastern Island nations was a good century behind our own. But you're here in London yourself. Are you really so ignorant about our omnibuses? I've been here for less than a day. Give me, give me that much at least. Huh? Tell me, my Nipponese friend, have you even traveled in an omnibus? Well, no. But I have only arrived in London this morning. No matter. I've arranged for us all to see for ourselves the actual scene of the crime, that is. Oh, perfect. I would love more information. The actual scene? Care is designed to be moved, after all. Presumably you understand that much. Yeah, y yeah. The only bus in which this bloody crime took place is here today in this very building. Here. What? The, the entire carriage? Bailiff. Bring forth the stricken omnibus. <laughs> it's just like a team of bailiffs just like, hoo ah uh, hoo oh. Interesting, it does have a bunch of ads on it. So that's the omnibus. The um, I was like wondering what it would look like. And yeah, that doesn't look like it has... Oh, could people be sitting on the top too? I can't believe they could bring something so enormous in here. Great Prince courtrooms are amazing. I guess because they have a big door. <laughs> As you can see, the omnibus is pulled by two horses. It can carry up to eight passengers. Okay. Uh, four passengers inside the enclosed cabins, another four in the roof. Uh, top uh, deck above. Okay, this is important. Every Londoner knows, so that's how you could potentially have only the two, right? And then have other people available. That's how you could have two people alone together while also having others, like, riding the omnibus, right? Uh, that the best views of the city's architecture and sites are to be had from the top of the omnibus. <laughs> I like how it's just at the witness stand. <laughs> oh my goodness. I guess that's not an advertisement. That's probably like it's starting and endpoints. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just staring at its details. Hmm. But there's a skylight in the rooftop allowing for a view of the interior from the seat above. Okay. Picture of this. Does this give us any indication of what side he was on? Is that towards the back or the front seat, basically? Oh! The penny drops at last, I see. These two gentlemen were occupying the rooftop seats on this omnibus when the murder took place. That is how they came to witness the grim incident. The, uh, through the skylight. Ah, that makes a perfect sense. Oh, Council, this is a first. In all my years behind the bench, I've never experienced the crime scene itself being brought into the courtroom. There are a number of important clues remaining inside the carriage, my lord. I'd like to submit the omnibus itself as evidence. That is the prosecution's wish. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Very well, I see no reason why not. This omnibus hereby is formally accepted as evidence. Ha ha ha, you don't say. Can't believe it. The entire crime scene entered as evidence? Yes, Great Britain is simply extraordinary. Hmm. Not a thorough examination yet. Let's see how much we can actually look at it. Okay. Uh, so there's a difference between the front and back. Little pane there. So it's not a window, but it is... It's not a window, but it is a frame that is distinct from each other, front and back. Meaning that he was in the front, <laughs> which does pose a fairly good view for what's going on. 
Phoenix Wright? Omnibus? Oh no! That feels, uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Hmm. And we can see the blood stain there. Can we go inside and look? Well, let's open the door and go inside, shall we? Ugh, scene of a murder. It's horrible. for the Great Exhibition that's due to start six months from now. Okay. There's a lot of focus being drawn to the Crystal Tower, the centerpiece of the whole exposition. Sounds familiar. Under construction already. People all over London must be fizzing with excitement at the process of such a grand event. Definitely a worthwhile thing to talk about right now. That's blood that's soaked into the sea. The victims, obviously. Yes, and that seat would be clearly visible from the roof deck. Can you really stab someone in full view of the other passengers like that, I wonder? Well, it was after dark. There's a lamp on in here. So perhaps the culprit couldn't see anything outside uh, through the skylight. Whichever way you look at it, it doesn't seem like it was a planned attack. It cannot be opened from the inside of the cabin. Interesting. Seems like a notable. Wait. I talk about Crystal Tower there. It's also something. I guess, yeah, it's just a different notice on each side. It wasn't much, to be honest. Hmm. Let's see if uh, Van Zeeks over there has any specific ideas. Hmm. Pray don't tell... Pray don't expect this Nibanese stray to understand the intricacies of British courses cross-examination rules. Did I research this part? I hope I know this part. Alright. My first cross-examination in a British court. Focus, Reynosuke. Focus! Oh, that's interesting. So I can look at other people's reactions. And there's a pursue. Huh. The passenger that had the knife in his hand, like this. By the other passenger, you are fearing to the accused, Mr. Magnus McGilded. And then he plunged it down like... Stabbing the other passenger in the... I don't think that makes sense. Just... Just... Based on how the blood is on the glove, especially with that grip type. Hmm. My lord! Hmm? Juror number three. What's the meaning of this? My mind is made up, my lord. Completely and utterly made up. Uh-oh. Made up about what? I don't like the stinking rich. Never have. They're always up to something or other that they shouldn't be. Every one of them. That little leprechaun of a man is no exception. Well, you can't fool me. What? What? There's no point wasting any time listening to more of this. That's my opinion on the matter anyways. Hold it. That is precisely what I was about to say. What? As the foreman of the jury, it's my duty to set a good example to my fellow jurors. Uh, what the... What is happening here? Let me see. Ah, yes, it seems that's how the members of the jury give their verdicts. They spit with fire. That seems very historically accurate. Apparently, yes. White for innocence and black for guilt. As the six members of the jury make up their minds about the case. One by one, they each cast a ball of fire into the great scales of justice, and, uh, as we saw a moment ago. So if these enormous scales fall completely to the black side, does that mean... 
Can we revert them? Let's do our very best to make sure that doesn't happen. Ah. Uh, I'm even more worried than I was before. Very well. The court acknowledges the change in the jury's stance. Counsel for the defense, please continue with your cross-examination. <laughs> wow, this is a nightmare. <laughs> All right, so when it happened, the only two people in the enclosed cabin area were the victim and the defendant. And so help me. Three whole people witnessed the man I'm trying to defend do the deed. I don't like to be pessimistic, but we do seem to be in a rather difficult situation. Ugh. I'm supposed to think here. I think I'm supposed to save just in case. Is Mr. McGill really in innocent? Or could it be? Before we jump to conclusions, our first task should be to gather information. We need to understand the case much better than we do at the moment. Yes, you're absolutely right. Let's listen to those witnesses' statements again, a little more carefully this time. <laughs> the boss insists on running, even the last uh, bus of the day. But I do wa uh, sometimes wonder if it's altogether worthwhile. Uh, sorry to say. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, with it being so cold and everything, and only making 20 pence on the run, you see? Yes, yeah, I, I spend that much at the pub on the way home, just trying to warm up again. Hmm. And I do feel sorry for Beppo. Fair play feels. Ah, uh, Hughes and Killian are sat next to each other inside of the bus. It's probably notable. Ooh, this is a new image. Two of them wearing hats, so I can exactly make out their faces. Oh, that's notable. There was something in one of the other court records where it mentioned that his his face is partially obscured from view by an old crooked hat. Huh. So the answer here is going to be like, oh, there's only two people down here. But you couldn't see that there's only two people there, right? There could have been someone. Uh, there could have been someone uh, on the other side of it, sleeping, and the other person was just dressed up like the guy. It's not a shred of doubt in my mind that it was Mr. McGilden. Why? How can you be so sure? Well, how can I put it politely? Ms. Uh, McGilden is a gentleman of rather small stature. I couldn't have mistaken him for anyone else. Not forget when the vehicle came to a halt, only the only people inside the closed cabin were the deceased Mr. Mason and Mr. McGilded. There's no room for doubt here. I feel like below the seats it looks like there is some room for like like hiding someone, but like below the seats it looked like there was like a shelving unit, but I don't know if those were actually shelving units. There was just handles on the outside. Or like a, uh, a like a a cabinet drawer sort of thing because there's a handle on the outside of him but I don't know what that was and when I tried to look at it when I was examining the thing it didn't give me an option to actually notice anything there so I, I, I don't know if that's it but it stood out to me when I was looking at it before uh oh uh, uh oh okay uh, is this my like punishment for Mr. McGilded is a pillar of society and a gentleman. And a gentleman's word should be sacrosanct. <laughs> oh. However. Yeah. Those of us in service know we must accept hard truths. Wait. What are you about to dispose of the rubbish? Oh, fuck. So, does that mean I can't lose another one? No. Not much to cause offense, but I do like to eradicate all traces of filth and grime. I painstakingly typed every word uttered here today and cross reference all the facts. As such, I am now in a position to draw the only logical conclusion. Oh my goodness, it's a majority. 
It's a majority. Does, does it have to be 100% to be guilty, or...? That's... It's four out of six jury members who proposed a guilty verdict. There are only two left. Got it. Every time I press the witnesses for more information, I just make the situation worse. Nevertheless, what we need more than anything at the moment is more information. We're still very much in the dark. I suppose I'll just have to keep pressing the witnesses, knowing that more sparks may very well may fly. I can give up hope that will uncover something that will give us a way to fight back. But... Alright, I'll keep trying. I can't give up. I just... I just need to keep calm and listen to the witnesses' statements again. I guess I just have to press everything. Hold it! Is it just if I do it too much, I'll like straight up lose? And I need to find the right one before they get... Is, is this just a you can only press so many times mechanic? You're sitting up on the roof deck, were you? Oh, that's right, sir. I was on the roof seats. Which one? Which set? I remember seeing the little gent sitting next to the fellow that was stabbed. I've been thinking about a new hat design, you see, so I was just gazing absentmindedly around. But then, oh, then I happened to look down through the skylight. It, it was sticking right out of his belly, that huge great knife. So you didn't see the stabbing, but you saw the what you were considering the immediate after effect. Hmm. Okay, shut up. The jury looks like they're even more convinced my client did it than they were before. That appears to made everyone even more dubious that Mr. Miguel is telling the truth. If only we had some evidence to counter their suspicions. Mr. First. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Is this the knife you saw? Oh, can we get that introduced? Oh, yes, that's it. The very one, sir. Is that? Yes, Counsel. This is the blade that was driven into the victim's belly like a stake through the heart. It is a blade of considerable size, Counsel. It is, and furthermore, the scabbard is emblazoned predominantly with a certain initial. The letter M. Which seems oddly familiar. Ah, uh, please, no. M. For Magnus, perhaps, or McGilded, possibly. Take your pick. But what if it's W? In this, uh, it seems this particular big name in London made a magnificent mistake. Objection! But uh, there are M's everywhere. Like, like, uh, yes. Like in Mason. Objection! Oh, that's fancy. This blade is far too extravagant for a poor brickmaker to have owned. No. This weapon of murder almost certainly belongs to the accused. Why would someone rich purposely use something that would be identified as only usable by him? <laughs> Not conclusive, but certainly compelling, counsel. Okay, we actually got new evidence. Uh, yeah, oh, yep, we finally got our... Uh, Got new. That doesn't look like an M. That looks like a W. An or ornate letter M. Undeniably, Mr. Magnus. Uh, McGilded's initial. It's beautifully gilded too. It must be very valuable, I should think. Ah, what is it? Look at this M. If you turn it upside down, it becomes a W. This could change everything. Oh, oh, please tell me that I'm on the right track with that. W, yes, this is one of those, you know, turnabout cases. I'm sure of it. I'm afraid I don't know at all, but what I'm sure of is that it is an M. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, that idea is quickly quashed. At least the game tells me to not pursue that. Uh, uh, that part is the sheath, isn't it? Are you all right, Mr. Naruhoto? Hmm? Oh, yeah, sorry. I, uh... I just don't really like blades. Oh. Those don't seem like words of a man with a large katana slung from his waist. It's not a blade, that's Kasuma's soul. Anyway, uh, there's no sense in delaying it. Let's see what the blade looks like. Interesting, so it was far enough up to... 
Ah, hmm. that looks like blood. Surely is blood. The victims. Ugh, an Englishman's blood looks a lot like a Japanese man's blood. Ain't ain't that a freaking? Ain't that a thing? <laughs> Did you think it wouldn't? Sorry, it's just that we we only just arrived here in Great Britain, finding it a little hard to adjust. Yes, I do understand. I don't know. Very, it's very interesting. I'm not really getting much more info out of looking at this. Did he say deeply? Maybe that's it. Oh, Lord, I was just speak. Yes, juror number five. Yeah, juror number six is... Number six is gonna be my savior. Juror number five, do I take, uh... The words... As the master of London Guild of Coachmen, the idea of a murder being committed in one of the six characters is utterly abhorrent to me. I wouldn't be right to make a decision before hearing all the facts, though. I said to myself... But I've heard enough now. The horse is bolted, as they say. No, no, please, just keep an open mind a little... Yup, silver blaze. The finish is in sight. I'm still just pressing. Beppo is a long-standing member of the guild, and I trust what the man says. Oh, thank you, sir. You're too, too kind, sir. Uh, this is... This is too unkind, sir. Which now means that five jurors agree to condemn this man. Uh oh. Madam Juror number six. Yes, dear? What can I do for you? You have heard the testimonies of the witnesses in the stand. Oh, yes, I certainly have. Still got my hearing, you know. Then, pray tell, why are you yet to pronounce your leaning? Well, dear, the thing is, I'm a creature of habit, me. I always go to the park at around this time of day, and sit on a nice bench and get on with my knitting. Uh, there's a lovely little park just near uh, where I live. The Gilded Park, it's gone. But the gentleman donated to the city, you know. Oh, to put a smile on Londoners' faces, he said. I can't imagine such a fine young gentleman would have it in him to take another man's life. He's always doing wonderful things for the city. That's right, a man like that wouldn't stab someone, surely. Well, then maybe go to the Gilded Public Library later and borrow some more books. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if he's not guilty. I know so little about it. I haven't heard anything in terms of motivation. I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard his account of what happened outside of, oh, I was asleep. So the only way I can imagine him being not guilty at this point, at the moment, is like, there had to be another person who was a small stature who did it. Like, they didn't see him clearly. But at the same time, they... It had to be someone similar-ish to him, which if it's similar-ish to him, it makes him feel like they had to have done it on purpose to, like, fuck with him, right? To get him. I don't know. How many Londoners live with their heads in the clouds? Do you people not know? What kind of a man Magnus McEwen really is? What kind of a man he is? The philanthropist Magnus McGilded has enough wealth to purchase the entire city he claims to value so highly. But where did all that wealth come from? The client is a Shylock, sir, and one with the very darkest of souls. What? Stone the Crows! Ah! Uh. McGilded lends money at an extortionate rate of interest, so his victims have no hope of repaying him. When they default, he takes possession of everything they own. He is a vulture that preys on the weak. I've, I've never heard any mention of that before. Your faculties haven't deserted you, I'm sure, madam. So, has this lot not crossed your mind? Would a man wealthy enough to buy London in its entirety not have a carriage of his own? 
That's a very fair point. Why would he go in the carriage? Better question. Why would he do something so fucking blatant in terms... It's just such an obvious, like... It's an obvious crime of so little deniability as we currently are. What possible reason could this man have had to make use of a public omnibus service? Um... I'm not saying that. The victim, a poor brickmaker, had next to nothing to his name save considerable financial liability. It would come as no surprise that his creditor was the accused, Magnus Begilded. But let it also be known that the very day Mr. Mason was killed, the final repayment date for his was the final repayment date for his debts. Good gracious! The brickmaker was destitute. He had lost his house. He had not a shilling with which to repay his debts. And in the end, his pitiful soul had the very last thing he owned taken from him. His life. So is this why this guy came out of retirement, basically, to... Because he, like, hates the guy? And he wants, like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking prosecute that guy to the fucking end, ends of the earth. Sort of thing. By the merciless philanthropist pretender, Magnus McGilded. I don't believe it. Hold it! If I might add something briefly. Susanna? You claim that the victim had let money had been lent money by Mr. McGilden. But where's the evidence to support your claim? Yeah, there's a lot of claims being thrown around at the moment without evidence. Not that I find them unbelievable. But I forgive the discourtesy of filling my hollowed chalice in court of law. Uh, there it is. Lord Van Zeek's hollow chalice! Uh, wait, how could this be considered acceptable? Well, I do have a sword on me. You have a sword on me, Rienos. You have a sword on you, Rienos. Okay. But I found myself in unexpectedly good humor. I had heard ladies from the Far East could show great courage, but... Huh, I didn't expect to experience it myself. Uh, as judicial assistant to the defense, I am simply doing my job. What a pity that your display of courage is in vain. This is the debtor's ledger, which details all monies loaned by the accused. You will find the victim's name clearly recorded inside. Oh. Okay, put in the evidence. Allow me to present the ledger as evidence. I'm praying for give the discourtesy of raising my challenge in a toast to the enigmatic East at the same time. Ooh, that's mean. A marvelous toast council! I will gladly accept this new evidence. Okay, let's uh, start jumping to looking into that. 20 guineas. The victim owed a considerable sum. Some. Ooh, and he's willing to give me a thousand? Hmm. Ah, uh, portfolio must contain all sorts of secrets. Oh dear, do you think we really ought to look inside? Well, it's not as though we know any of London's gentry personally, is it? Apart from our great detective friend, perhaps. He owes about 5,000. Actually, I wonder. <laughs> I assure you, we will not find Mr. Sholm's name inside. Well, let's see what we find. So legible. Hmm. You know, I was hoping to find some sort of mention of, like, the M to see that it was, like, different, maybe? Beautiful gentlemen's names, isn't it? Well, I suppose they're probably not all gentlemen at all, are they? They're all not everyone in this country is well off. Ah, uh, goodness! What is it? Look at this! Do you see the name here? Bruce Fairplay. Ooh. Should that mean something to me? It, it does sound strangely familiar, actually. I mean, Fairplay is one of the... Bruce Fairplay, the witness that's at this very moment. Oh, yeah, of course, the banker. Why is his name in here? Ah, uh, he borrowed 20 guineas, did he? And look, the repayment date is fast approaching. 
It's possible that this is just a coincidence, of course. Hmm. So debtors are trying to set up a... Cr uh, Only one of them, though. Hmm. It seems notable, but... 20 guineas. Wow, oh, yeah. A very considerable sum, it seems. Okay. And the Hughes made quite certain he had ample uh, recompense. Recompense. Yeah. Oh, let's see, I've... Oh, I've had the wool pulled off in my eyes. Regrettably, madam, that is the modus operandi of the accused. And it's such a pretty little park, too. What a scoundrel! No! Wait, 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 still. Maybe it's all for the best. Uh, w wait a minute! Let's think about this a little more before- I don't stand for nonsense. No, not number six! I just got the fucking evidence. This can't be the end. That was it. The last juror's decision. Uh, you have something? Uh, according to this Encyclopedia of British Law, when all members of the jury have concluded that the defendant is guilty, court proceedings are suspended, and the presiding judge will deliver the final verdict and sentence. That's what it says here. Uh, final verdict. It's over then. Oh. Or, there's a footnote though. A footnote. However, the defense. Wait, 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 let me. All six members of the jury are now in agreement on this case. Wait, 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 let's hear the footnote. Allow me to convey my respect for your swift and righteous decision. According to the laws of this country, I will now conclude the trial. By delivering my final verdict, I trust there are no objections. 